you know, growing up here, uh, your heroes were the varsity team. Yeah. You know, um, you know, you can just you can just feel it in the air from the time that I was that I was four. You know, during football season, uh, once that build comes up to Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that the the band's gonna be out there playing, uh, uh, they're gonna strike the lights up. Uh, you know, you can hear you hear O'Neal Herdick over there over the intercom. Mm -hmm. um, it was just the, the the whole town revolved around you know Friday night. Those guys, they came out like like maniacs, like no other team, other Woods World team that I've seen. In order to be the best, you gotta beat the best. Welcome to Refugio, Texas, home of the Bobcats. Winners of 35 district championships, 37 by district championships, 17 regional championships, nine-time semifinalists, two-time state runner-ups, and winners of three state championships in 1970, 1982, and most recently in 2011. So we've never, Referio's never taken us seriously, or, or, or I don't think Referio takes anybody seriously. They're just a, a powerhouse. You know, Referio is a, is a football giant, is a power, nobody would deny that, They're, they are a powerhouse. Okay, they they've been demolishing teams around here, you know, 60 to 0, 70 to 0, just killing folks around here. Refurio has always been a football powerhouse. In order to be the best, you got to beat the best, and Refurio has always been a program that uh, in South Texas everybody knows of as being a premier football town. Their their tradition is unbelievable. You know, they say they have a, as good a tradition as just about any. A small town in Texas, and they're right now ranked number one in the state. Just a few miles south of Refugio, with only the Mission River between them, is longtime rival Woodsboro. Woodsboro's record against the Bobcats a dismal 0 and 29. In 61 years, they've never beaten their biggest rival, not even once. Uh, Matthew Young, senior, played from 79 to 83 in Woodsboro High School. A anytime, anytime we have a chance to, to play Refugio in something, it, it's a, it's like a rivalry. You yeah. know, it's been going on for years, and it's continued, it's gonna continue to do that way. Yeah. But I, I, uh, I relish the chance to play them in football. In 2001, district realignment brought an end to the Battle of the Mission River. Matt Jones Jr. was on the field for Woodsboro for the final game. Referrals always had it in football. They've always beat us there. So, and I mean, they've had football, we've had basketball. But I mean, once we moved away, we never. After my freshman year, we didn't play in basketball. We didn't play in football. We just stopped completely. There, people would, you know, you would, you would hear that this may be the year. This may be the year that Woodsboro beat Referrio. And uh, definitely, I would come down. I, you know, I was living in L.A. If I heard that, I would, I would make the trip. Yeah. I'd fly down to that game t to watch, you know, Woodsboro beat Referio. Uh, but maybe, uh, I don't know, I think three or four years later, they said that, you know, Woodsboro was going to be going to 1A and would not be playing Referio anymore. And I was devastated. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, there, there goes our shot, you know. There's, there's, there's never going to be uh, an, a, another opportunity. It's just going to be all in the past, you know. And with that, the Battle of the Mission River was over. The Bobcats achieved a 61-year flawless victory. It was done. Or so it seemed. I don't know what the, how the topic came up, but they were talking about Referio was putting together an alumni football team. Mm -hmm. 
I was like, you know, yeah, you know, but I, I was thinking, nah, it, would, it wouldn't be, it was just talk or, you know, it probably wouldn't be very organized and all that, so. But the thought did cost me my like, man, it'd be cool, you know, Woodsboro had an alumni team, but I pretty much really just blew it off. And then uh, uh, about a month later, I heard it was, it was true. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is it. Yeah. This is it. This is what, you know, I it just feel like everything happens for a reason. We were very pumped and said, man, if we can put a Woodsboro Battle of the Mission River is what we called it. Yeah. Back then, it was called Battle of the Mission River. It's like, man, if we can bring back the Battle of the Mission River, the, the county would go nuts. Everybody would come out, and it would be a great way. You know you're going to get a good turnout, a great way to raise money for our for our two schools. And so it, it just all made sense. And so uh, so I went ahead, and I, I contacted South Texas alumni, told them about the rivalry, and they were all about it. Say, hey, just let us know when you want to do it. And uh, so I just went about start making phone calls. And then I started getting phone calls from other people. Hey, Green, what do, what do I have to do to... Uh, Help this make this get this going and so forth and uh, so uh, but you know the first thing we need some leadership we need a coach men who hadn't worn a helmet for more than a decade jumped at the opportunity future hall of fame coach don long was called to lead the team now when doug called i said jug you gotta be kidding <laughs> you know i said y'all gonna play flag and he said no coach we're gonna play helmets and shoulder pads live football and I said you got to be joking I said some of those some of you guys have no business doing that he was he seemed a little skeptical at first about it and you know about you know some of the old guys that probably would be playing and would they be able to hang be able to make it and we're going to need oxygen tanks on the sidelines for them to you know survive uh. but I, I said let me think about it and I got his phone number and I thought about it and talked to my wife about it and and I, I said hon I can't I can't say no to this. I mean, that's an honor that they asked me. So I called him back and said, when are we going to do it? We started right away. The next weekend, we started working out. Yeah. I picked up the phone and called Coach Long, and uh, I remember the conversation. I hadn't talked to Coach Long probably in 10 years, and you know, he answered the phone. I said, Coach Long, how are you? Who is this? It's Mattingly. And he just started, in his way, an old kind of underbelly laugh. <laughs> he goes, you know, you know y'all are stupid. We're stupid for playing. I said, hell yeah we are, but I want to do it, you know, and he started laughing. At first he said, you know, you know, really I'm just going to facilitate you guys go out there and have fun. Yeah. But uh, as the practice, practices came about, you know, people uh, were really getting into it. Uh, you can see, you know, just that winning instinct in Coach Long uh, start to kick on. He said, you know, he told us, you know, guys, I want to win. I want to win this guy. I want to beat these guys. Yeah. You know, I want this win. And that got really got us all really pumped up uh, to go out there and, and make this happen. Make it, you know, it'd be, it'd be history. It'd be historical for this town. You ever go out and hang out with your old high school friends and you go, if I just get that one more shot, Lord God, please give me that one more chance. You know what I'm saying? If you could ever get in that position again um, to be able to play Refugio, that's why when this opportunity came up, I wasn't going to let it pass because that's what I've been praying for. I wanted this. I wanted one more time. Just give me one more time. Man, it's just, it was, uh, you know, the more we got involved in it, the more it was taking us back to, you know, 20 years back when we were in high school. It was like we never left. It was amazing. And I never would have thought it would have turned out to be this big or this uh, much of a deal. But, man, um, you know. Tell me about it. You, you told uh, your mom that you were going to play this game. And what she said? My mom said it was the stupidest idea she ever heard in her life. <laughs> a guy that my age had no business going out there and playing. I, um, I wanted to play because there was just some, it felt like a portion of my high school career in Woodsboro was undone and I just needed to be able to prove something to myself. One of the first things they asked me, two, two, the two first things they asked me when we had our first workout, Coach, how much conditioning are we going to do because I was, I was tough on conditioning, yeah. I believed in it and I said none, you're on your own. On that, I said, "You get your get yourself in shape," and then one of them said, "Coach, can we drink a beer after practice?" <laughs> and I said, "Yeah, just get off school ground before you do it." <laughs> it clicked for me. It clicked for me mm -hmm. 
when we went out on that field, you know, pregame to warm up, and I looked across, and I saw that orange and black over there. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, it's here, it's time. I can't wait, I can't wait to <laughs> hit somebody in that orange and black, you know, and let it all out, pent up 15 years, you know. And up until the moment we put the pads on and we were on the field and standing there during the national anthem, did I go, oh my God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Uh, it was literally, I, I felt like a little kid again and, you know, nervous as hell, scared to death, going, all right, what are we going to do now? Woodsboro gets the ball first, and they waste no time letting their rivals know just how motivated they are. In just 10 plays, Woodsboro finds pay dirt. Uh, wow, the first one's on the board against Referio when, when nobody even scores against Referio and you score, you're the first one to score. That was, that was a accomplishment, accomplishment in itself. They elect to go for the extra point. It was, uh, yeah, I was nervous. Did you kick? No, I didn't kick at all. Never kick. No? Never. Not Never. No, I just kicked straight on. Just straight, straight toe. Straight toe. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go over by very much, but... Uh, okay. Uh, everybody said it looked like two or three inches, but it was about three feet. <laughs> From the sidelines, it looked like three inches. That first extra point, we didn't realize how important that was, but he barely got that thing over the bar, and, uh, and that was it. Woodsboro drew first blood, but the Refugio defense came alive just a few plays later, turning a short interception into six points. Oh, when they came back, I was like, oh crap, you know. Uh, we, uh, we can't let that get to us mentally. Yeah. That was the thing, we can't, that score, and so that's why it was very important that once they, that, that conversion, when they were going for the two point conversion, it was very important for us to stop them then. In what seems like a bizarre move so early in the ball game, Refugio elects to try for two points. I just, I just figured they had a, they had a problem with kicker. I, uh, you know, that was my thinking, but you know, we, our rules, uh, didn't allow you to rush the kick or anything. You just you had all day yeah. to snap the ball, put it on the tee, and kick it. You know, so uh, I just felt like you know if we can get one over the goalpost, that's what we want to do. And I didn't. Yeah, I was kind of surprised they went for two, but we were ready for it. I thought maybe they just didn't have a good field goal kicker or something. I, I don't. I didn't. It didn't really come across to me as cocky or anything. To me, it didn't. Uh, but I know they're a very very confident uh, group of guys over there. Uh, maybe so, but you know, uh, that defensive stand right there was, was, uh, uh, was amazing. The decision to go for two would turn out to be their biggest mistake of the night. Heading into the locker room, Woodsboro held a narrow lead, 7-6. Um, you know, Halftime is, is uh, not that clear to me. Um, I, I remember coach saying, you know, uh, he knows a couple guys didn't hasn't really got to get in yet, and he's going to try and get them in there to play. Yeah. Uh, but we have an opportunity to win this game, and um, you know we may have to put the guys in there that's going to make it happen. And everybody was like, "Shh, don't care." And then put in, put in there who you have to put in there. Everybody wanted to win. Everybody wanted to win, and yeah. uh, we walked we walked in there. We were excited. You know, we were uh, very confident, and. Uh, uh, we're giving Coach Long all our attention, and uh, you know, getting getting together the game plan to make sure that we that we finish this off. Uh, so a lot of excitement in the in the field house. I thought we were going to go in there and be bullying these kids around. You know, I really didn't think we'd get that much fight back. <laughs> but little did I know, uh, these guys probably half their team played on a semi-professional team or club ball for football in uh, Victoria or wherever it is. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was something else. I said to myself, this is the difference between men and boys. Yeah. This is, I mean, dead serious. I mean, you can put a man up against a boy and I'm gonna whip him all day long on that field. <laughs> and you know what, I could have whooped anybody that night because I so wanted that win so bad, you have no <laughs> idea how bad I wanted that. I wanted it worse than anybody. <laughs>
neither defense gave up much, if anything. That is, until late in the third quarter, when quarterback Jeremy Hubble finds Matt Jones Jr., who darts for the end zone. The celebration was short-lived, as the holding penalty brought the ball all the way back. I'd like to see if Sean held, because they called holding right in front of us, and I was watching Matt Jr. run down the sideline and going, yeah, man, we're going to you know, be over but uh, that was that was exciting. It was like that was like, huh, you know, take that referio, you yeah. know, kind of a uh, thing. But uh, it got called back, and uh, sure enough, I think you'll see that uh, that there, the the penalty was uh, valid. Yeah. Um, but it was just even more confident boosters for us to so to, to say that referio is not invincible, and we can, you know, we can take it to him. Woodsboro was unable to find the end zone again, and the defensive battle resumed. With time winding down in the game, Refugio moved closer to the end zone with every play. They were close enough that a field goal would give them the win, but the Bobcats pushed for the end zone. It all came down to this. I had to come out for like three plays, and Coach Long walked by, and I don't think he had spoke to me the whole game, and he looked down at me and he goes, White, what are you doing? I said, Coach, I'm trying to catch my breath. He said, you can breathe later. We're about to lose this football game. Get your big butt out there. So, I could hear the clock ticking, you know, it's like <laughs> echoing, tick, tick. If Woodsboro could muster one final stop, they would make history. Every eagle on the field knew the importance of this moment. The pass that would have saved Refugio's perfect record against Woodsboro ends in a spectacular interception. The guy that I was going against on that play tackled me. He, he grabbed onto my leg and held me. And I, I was falling down and I just reached out and I grabbed the, the guard that was just standing there. And I figured if I'm going down, I'm taking somebody with me. And I pulled him to the ground and he started laying punches on me. He's punching me and I look down the field, the guy intercepts the ball. And I could tell the wind was out of the referral guy's sails. And it was pretty much a nail in the coffin. When we won that game, you know, the people were furious saying, man, you guys were acting like y'all won the Super Bowl. <laughs> and to us, yeah, it was better than the Super Bowl. If there was a World Galaxy Football Bowl, you know, I would equate it to that. It was better than that. To us, it was, the victory was like, we were at state, we won state. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was our state game that we never had, you know. And I said, this ranks way up there for me on my career. I said, uh, finally got, I finally got a win over Furio, and, and y'all did too. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was nice. For the first time in 70 years, the crown crossed the Mission River. So that that was exciting, and then I, I did, I was just tickled with the uh, reaction and response of the community. They were just fired up. Crowd. Yeah, and they wouldn't get off the field. I finally went and told Coach Bickers. <laughs> I said, Coach, you know, they may stay here all night if you don't go shut one bank of lights off and you know <laughs> drop a hint. <laughs> but they were excited. They were fired up. It was fun. And uh, if they want to rematch, we'd be more than happy to give it to them. I mean, like I said, it's gonna be a different year, a different month, but same results. Yeah.